Ever since the Freehold stream two weeks ago, Stephen Sharif has been all over the internet trying to clear up misconception and addressing concerns regarding the system, whether that be in Discord, in the Theory Forge Q&A, or randomly dropping into the Tangents of Creation podcast. And between that and the Freehold article that just dropped, it is time to compile it all into one place so you can hopefully fully understand everything you need to know about Freeholds. Also, a huge shout out to Rive Genesis, who has much better note-taking skills than I do, which made gathering some of the info I missed a hell of a lot easier. Freeholds are described as the pinnacle of achievement for player housing in Ashes of Creation, something that all players should strive for but only few may actually achieve within the world of Vera. From their limited availability, the requirement of completing a quest chain from a lord, and winning a bid in an auction style sale, and then maintaining that freehold and paying taxes so they don't foreclose. Freeholds will be something that only the most invested players will get their hands on, and that is okay, because Ashes of Creation is designed around the mind mindset that not everyone is going to get a trophy. The game is not going to equally hand out freeholds and flying mounts to everybody, and that is just the type of game it is meant to be. Each player is allowed to have one freehold per account. So if you own a freehold and decide to make a new character on a different server, well you cannot get a freehold on that character until the old one is gone. Freeholds have three main purposes. Allowing players to express themselves with housing, building, and furniture. Allowing players to gain access to the highest level of processing and allowing players to build businesses to offer services to other players. Intrepid gave us a pretty cool map in the article to show you how exactly these freeholds will revolve around the nodes. You can see on the bottom we have the node Mirrolith, and around it you have six regions with yellow borders. These are called baronies, which Intrepid referred to throughout the livestream as counties. Baronies are a predetermined area of land near the node, filled with estates that you can then place your freehold in. Also within each barony, at the very center there is a place for a guild hall. But these guild halls will not all be active at once, as Steven stated on the Tangents of Creation podcast, while their locations are there, only three may be active at any given time with a note as Stage 6. When you are ready to embark on your quest for a freehold, well the first thing you need to do is be max level, which is level 50. Once you complete the quest from the Lord after that and obtain your deed to get to this point of waiting to build a freehold, you will need to head to a note and bid on an estate if one is available. The amount of estates available for bidding will be determined on the level of the node. Obviously, the higher level node, the more estates that are available, but this number is said to cap somewhere in the low thousands. The type of node will also change what type of bidding it is. Intrepid is currently working on a system called Favor, which is a religious node currency that you can earn by doing activities at that node type. Some freeholds will be biddable with gold, some with favor, some with honor, or whatever that currency may be tied to that specific node. When you win that bid for a state, which can only be done if you have an unplaced freehold deed, then you can place your freehold within the borders of that estate, but keep in mind that they cannot be placed within 100 meters of another freehold. The location of your freehold will matter to your plans as well, because you will want to try to strategically place them near resources to enhance your ability for processing or making it a lot closer to your storage chest when gathering so you don't need a caravan or mule. Once you find your freehold spot, you can claim it, and the freehold plot will start out with just a shed on it, and from here you can begin bringing the materials to your freehold that you you need as you begin construction. The first building that you'll need to build on your freehold is the house. To do this, you'll need a freehold blueprint, which can be acquired throughout the world of Vera doing various activities, and each blueprint has unique benefits to it. This blueprint will also save all progress made on housing artisan buildings and businesses when returned to a player, saving your progression in case your freehold is destroyed after a node siege. Blueprints will also determine the style of housing. A Dunir blueprint will give you a Dunir house, a Veiloon blueprint will give you a Veiloon house, and so on and so forth unless you can apply a cosmetic skin to the blueprint. Your freehold is about 1.5 acres of land where you can place up to 6 buildings on it, but this is dependent on the size of the building as the bigger the house, the less room you'll have for other buildings, but the more room you'll have for furniture. While a smaller house takes up less space, allowing more room for alternate buildings, so you really want to plan out what you're going to do with the little space you have. 
The house itself will act as a safe place within PvP, while on the footprint of your home you cannot be harmed by damage from other players, which is one of the few spots in the world where you are actually considered safe from PvP. The biggest question people have had when it comes to housing and other buildings among freeholds throughout the last few years is cosmetics. And now we know that the cosmetics are broken into five categories. Large houses, medium houses, small houses, artisan buildings, and businesses. And for anyone who has actually purchased a freehold cosmetic in the past, whether that be from bundles or as an individual item, Intrepid has made a nice list of which skins go where over on the website, which you can find in the description below. But if you're like me and are a visual person, I put together these images of each category and their cosmetics so you can look for what you need and I will also be dropping them on my Twitter later today for you to look for as well. When putting together these images, two freehold skins stood out to me. This coastal house with docks and a boat, and this lighthouse standing on rocks with some harsh waves bashing up against it. Both of which I feel would look very out of place if just plopped in the middle of the riverlands or a desert or really any biome without any water surrounding them, as cosmetics will have no restriction when it comes to zones or environments. So I did what any insane man would do, and I asked Steven how these ones specifically would work, to which he stated, we will use a decal system or otherwise to emulate water on the building's footprint. Which sounds like it's probably the best solution we could get with the way the freeholds are designed, since there isn't any water or ocean on the freeholds. Although they will still look very out of place in my opinion at times, especially when you're walking in the middle of the desert and all of a sudden come up to this giant lighthouse with a little bit of water surrounding it. But thankfully, a lot of these skins will be very rare as only a small percentage of the player base will own them. And if you're one of those people who own them and no longer have interest in it, well Intrepid will be allowing you to exchange your freehold skins for embers closer to launch, which is their cosmetic shop currency so you can purchase new skins to replace them. There are two types of buildings beyond housing, artisan buildings and business buildings. Artisan buildings are for those who want your freehold to enhance your ability to craft and process goods. Constructing artisan buildings will allow you to place profession stations on your freehold related to the profession of that artisan building, and those stations can be placed anywhere on the freehold that surface allows. These stations will also apply bonuses to all other stations on the freehold. But there is a catch. All freehold buildings minus housing will require a permit from a node, which could add additional upkeep costs to that freehold, and if you don't pay these costs, well, that freehold can be foreclosed, which will help prevent inactive players from holding up the spots. If you want to become a master processor, which includes professions such as the animal husbandry system, alchemy, cooking, farming, lumber milling, metalworking, stone masonry, tanning, and weaving, then you will want to find yourself a freehold as the only spot you will find mastery level processing workstations are through freeholds. Each processing profession has four processing stations that unlock as players can progress. Freeholds also grant the ability to allow you to raise animals as well, which will then give you resources that can be used for other professions or sold to other players. For example, you can milk a cow, collect eggs from a chicken, or even slaughter a pig for meat and leather. But think carefully about placement because again, you only have so much space and you will not be able to have every single processing building on one freehold. These processing stations that you place will require a fuel type to operate, which is said that any item can have some sort of fuel value to it and players can mix and match different fuels together to fulfill the fuel value of the recipe. Freeholds don't just have to be about processing though, you can also run your own business here as well, giving services to other players. You could set up a potion shop near a hunting ground for players to get potions they need, you could set up a tavern that allows players to rent a room and gain rested experience from a bed, and these services can all work without you being present, as you may hire NPCs to man some of these functions. These buildings you decide to have will also have talent trees like this one on the screen, allowing you to use resources to increase the perks of that building, such as increasing increasing rested XP from a bed and increasing the speed at which you gain it. There's also things like arcane golems that you can spec into which would assist with all lumber mill jobs, reducing resources and costs.
Freeholds also allow you to restrict people from doing certain things. If your node hasn't been sieged, no one is going to be able to walk right up onto your farm without your permission and steal your crops. But you can allow specific people to access these to help you with rotation, or you could just be helping a friend out, allowing them to gather your goods, which can be done through guild systems and family systems. Through the family system, you can have up to eight people in a family, which opens up the processing a bit more because those family members can then use your high-end processing stations as well if you allow them to. There are two ways in the game players can say bye to their freeholds, node sieges and foreclosure. If a node is successfully sieged, there is a two hour time period in which players can then go out and loot freeholds, which means they're harvesting your resources and destroying them. Things like furniture and blueprints will be safe and returned to you through in-game mail, but all of that hard work when it came to crop rotation and raising those cows, well, that's gone. If you're part of a node that was destroyed, it might be best for you to hire some NPC guards, along with gathering up a few guildmates, friends, or family members to help you. You'll be given a chance to defend your freehold for this time period, and if you succeed after this two hour period, you along with any remaining freeholds will have a week where another node may take over your zone of influence. At the end of that grace period, if the freehold doesn't reside within a stage three node, it will be destroyed. But if a new node does appear and gets to the right level, you will have to take on a quest to have your freehold adopt by the new node. If you are one of the many players that lost out in the bid and don't get a freehold, well there are other housing options available between non-instance housing within nodes or instance apartment buildings, all which may have some form of profession tied into them, even if it's something as simple as planting seeds and flower pots. The family system and guild systems will also open up the processing system to a whole bunch of other people as well, so processing endgame won't be completely impossible without a freehold. But at the end of the day, Ashes of Creation has always been been designed as this old school risk versus reward type game where not everyone is going to end up winning everything. Not everyone is going to get a freehold for playing Ashes of Creation. This is not an MMORPG that's going to hand out everything to you. And for those of you who don't have access to a freehold or end game processing, well, you can also take part in the gathering or crafting professions because you can only master one branch of the artisan system. Freeholds have come a very long way since we first saw them in the nodes video way back in 2018 and they still have a long way to go. Most of these node features aren't 100% locked in as Intrepid is always looking and listening to player feedback on these systems, which is why Steven has been all over the place answering questions in Q&As, randomly dropping into people's streams, and answering as many questions as he can on Discord. So if you want to be heard, Give your feedback on the forums, jump into Discord, because they are listening. And if you made it this far into the video, well, click that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up to help the channel out, and comment down below if you are excited for Freeholds and Ashes of Creation. Otherwise, if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Era. Otherwise, be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come.